Hey everybody, Eric Radvon here. Uh, this is part four, I believe, of uh, the series of videos I'm putting together called uh, Comic Book Inspirations. And it's kind of a uh, semi-guided tour through um, my uh, three or four decades steeped in the comic book world and uh, highlighting some of the, the stories that have stood the test of time for me. Um, inspired me as a reader uh, and inspired me as a creator. Uh, so on this episode I'm taking a look at a title called Berlin by a uh, cartoonist called Jason Lutz and um, this one is, uh, is, is a big one for me. Um, I started reading this with issue one, the issue you see presented right here. I think I had just started working my very first job um, at, at a local comic book store and this thing hit the racks and one of the things that struck me by it was its sort of unique design of the cover very eye-catching and also the size of it it wasn't a normal um, standard comic book size it was kind of its own um, like offset uh, slightly smaller square kind of um, kind of production and uh, you know the the story takes place um, in the interwar period in in Germany, so it's the the Weimar Republic uh, period between the end of World War One and the beginning of of World War Two. Uh, it's this really expansive, dramatic story. You have a, a big sprawling cast. It's everything from um, you know from from a middle aged journalist to uh, uh, you know uh, young uh, kids playing in the street. Um, you know, teenagers and people in their 20s uh, falling in and out of love. Um, you've got, uh, you know, this this cast playing out across this political spectrum where you have uh, a, a rising uh, uh, communist movement within the city. You've got a rising fascist movement within the city and everything is, is intersecting uh, from the streets on up. Um, it's a really beautifully told story. Uh, the artwork is incredible. It's a it's a blend of I would say um, you know realism in terms of the the architecture of the city. It's brought wonderfully to life. But what I really like about it is that the characters uh, they, there's just an element of pure cartooning here as well. Um, so for me, this was an immediate hit. Uh, I really really love the first issue. Um, I think I subscribed to it right away, and new issues would show up. Um, semi-regularly. This wasn't like a, um, a pure monthly book. Uh, in, it started off in April 1996. That's when this first issue dropped. And it just wrapped up in um, uh, March 2018 is when the final issue. And I think it was like 22 issues in total. So you take 22 issues and you spread it out over those um, couple decades there. So pretty epic uh, uh, journey for the readers as well as for the creator in going through this. So, you know, the story, uh, again, it's set in that, in that period of time between the two world wars. Um, and, you know, it's just a, a super captivating, um, captivating experience. Uh, after the first issue, um, you know, the, the, the tension pretty rapidly ratchets up uh, across the board. So you've got this big sprawling cast, you've got them, encountering uh, all kinds of things you have this you know this sense of dread hanging over your head as a reader knowing what's in store for them right um seeing their hopes and their fears and um, the situation that they're in uh, and, and we all know what's coming you know down down the path for them um and, and it gives this this sense of dread but within that there's a real um you know, there's a, there's a real element of humanity and, um, and incredible human stories that are being told here. Um, I think around the turn of the century, so around 2000, 2001, the first half dozen or so issues of Berlin were collected into this collection that I'm showing here. And man, I was such an ambassador for this book. This collection was my, my coffee table book uh, forever. This was the book that you know, people would be like, oh, you're into comics, you know, and they would ask me, like, who's your favorite character or whatever. And I would be like, that's not really what uh, I mean by saying into comics, uh, you know, although I love the superhero stuff and 
you know, I'm, I'm reading the, uh, the goofiest, you know, crossover type thing. This is the one I would keep on my coffee table to show friends and family and stuff. Um, I loan this thing out to so many people. Like, you got to check this out. When I say I'm into comics, this is what I mean. And, um, it, and it got dog-eared and coffee-stained and, and everything else, which to me is like the best the best compliment of, of a work. Um, it, I really was a, was a strong ambassador for this thing. And uh, you know, I think anyone I was hanging around with 20 years ago now, which is crazy, uh, can attest to it. I probably thrust this upon them uh, when we were sharing books or whatever. So um, this was a big one for me, um, you know, in terms of just something that I felt like I could be proud to keep on the coffee table and say this represents what I'm talking about when I talk about comics uh, again, comics, it's not a genre. Comics doesn't mean superheroes by default. It's a medium. And I think that's like, this was a really great shorthand to tell that story. So instead of having to get into a big, um, you know, stuffy sounding you know, debate about comics or whatever, or what it means, I could simply hand this over and be like, oh, check this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love cable and um, super into, um, you know, uh, you know what's happening with uh, the x-men right now but also this is in the mix too and this is the type of thing like you know comics can be this as well and so for me this was really a strong a strong shortcut uh to explain to people what i was talking about when i was talking about the comic scene uh, and again you know it had a really um really unique form factor really unique look and feel um to the to the reading the the black and white art was uh was stunning, uh, both in his characters and also, um, you know, the the architecture and the landscape. So you can get a sense of that in um, in this page here that's showing. Um, so just really beautifully constructed pages, really great character moments throughout. Um, you know, the relationship building is is like as good as any drama that you would see on cable television, um, like high production drama. Type of thing. Um, this is ripe for adaptation. Although the great thing about it is, it's so, um, it's so much a comic book. You know, the the beats that it takes, the the uh, the storytelling methods that it uses. It, there's as real as it is, as dramatic as it is, as beautifully fleshed out the, as the characters are. It is essentially um, also very much a comic and very much like, you know leveraging all the different toolkits of the um, the comic medium here to to bring this story to life so yeah this is a really uh, a, a really special one out there um, one of the interesting things that happened is that so Berlin's telling this story of a society that's uh, you know has has these hopes and dreams of, of kind of crawling out of the darkness and establishing a, a strong democracy and you just see things erode slowly and it's it's really painful and um, harrowing uh, to, to experience this erosion of it. Um, so, you know, again, this, this started in 1996 where, you know, reading it then it was like, wow, could you imagine? Well, then fast forward to our times and, you know, Berlin was still plugging away and here we are and, you know, and, in, in, you know, then the, uh, you know, say 2016 or something towards the end of its run. And, um, you know, you, you have a rise of, of, um, of populism uh, around the world. You have, uh, you know, some some serious rumblings across the, the established global order happening. Um, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, planting flags here and a political thing. I'm just saying in a, in a human sense, like this, this is an undeniable thing that's been happening uh, across the world. So uh, it was especially surreal to see the world catch up to a lot of the themes and methods that um, you know that that Jason Lutz was talking about in Berlin, and uh, so as as the book got to the end of its run, um, um, reality had caught up to the story in a really strange way. They were both in sync, um, and it was it was truly bizarre because it, you know when I first started reading this in the in the late nineties, it was. Um, it was such a distant thing, and that was part of the allure of it too. It was like, wow, this is like a magical portal into this like really um, unimaginable place and time. You know, like, oh my God, could you imagine living through this? And then, not that things progressed, you know, to to the level 
of that, but there was enough commonalities there to be kind of eerie uh, towards the end. Um, just in the term of, of the way things, the unexpected can happen, right? And, and that those, those magical lines that exist in society that we think are there can crumble and evaporate seemingly overnight. So um, that was pretty wild. One of the cool things about this book too, again, it was released over like a 22 year period and it was um, perhaps longer, sorry, it was 22 issues released from uh, 1996 through uh, 2018. So, you know, pretty sporadic output. And again, I think it's because of the quality of it. You know, some of these, some of these pages and these panels are so intricate and so beautiful that, you know, Lutz made no compromises uh, in putting this together. Um, but it was always a special surprise to go into the comic book store and then boom, oh my gosh, a new issue of Berlin. And it was so um, sporadic and irregular that it was always a surprise. And each one grabbed me back in every single issue, every single chapter. It was just like, um, it was like sitting down to have a, 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 you know, a chat with an old friend or something. And it was really amazing. Um, and then I was surprised to see the, the series wrap up, you know, because it was one of those things that had been such a constant for so long. And then all of a sudden it's like, Hey, this is the second to last issue. And then, and then the last issue came. Um, I think the way it was all tied up was really breathtaking and, uh, and beautiful. I mean, you, you have this story set between these two massive events in history and then, um, and then knowing everything that happened uh, after this uh, throughout the city of Berlin with the, the Cold War and the Berlin Wall all the way up to today. And, you know, the city of Berlin is a much different place now. And having gone through all these different tidal wave events of history, it's pretty incredible. Um, and all these different characters caught up in these waves. It's really a sweeping, um, sweeping story. So, you know, if you're not, you're not a comic book person but you're a fan of like historical fiction or things like that um or you know historic based uh um you know dramas berlin is totally up your alley if you are a superhero comic book fan but you're curious as to like what else is going on in the medium i can't recommend a better book than berlin um to check things out um so yeah it's one of my 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 favorites it's a huge inspiration and just in terms of quality um every single issue is just like a plus quality. There was no sacrifices made. He, he never phoned it in throughout the, um, you know, throughout every 22 issue. It was like he put it all, all on the page, which was pretty amazing. Um, I think these days they have a, um, they have a, a complete collection that you can get. So that, you know, that makes it nice, um, you know, to get it all in one volume and read through the whole thing and. You know, it would be worth revisiting for me to do that because I read it over the, the you know, the period of two decades. Um, but again, Berlin, it's a pretty great one. And um, thanks for checking, checking out the videos and we'll talk soon.